Hi everybody, welcome back to Mando Lessons. Today we're going to continue our exploration of chords um, and just sort of talk about making any chord you really want at this point just by having a sense of scale degrees. Um, so in the first chord lesson I talked about um, the root, the third, and the fifth make um, your standard three note chord. So if it's a major chord, we have in the key of G, we have one, two, three, four, five, one, three, five. There's a G, a D, a G, a B, and a D. You recombine those on the instrument, you get your G chord. Then we talked about adding that fourth note in there for um, more jazz oriented chords, um, like the major seven, where you have an F sharp. Just as well, um, thrown into the mix, or an F natural for a dominant 7, or a flat 3, a flat B in the case of G, B flat, and F natural for a G minor 7 chord. Um, but now we're going to talk about, let's say somebody wants, uh, you see, major 7 with a 9. Um, it, at first, th these chords can look a little intimidating because there's uh, there's a lot of numbers thrown at you. Um, but what you, all you need to remember is just to count to one one through eight, and then start they start repeating. So a nine in the case of a G scale is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So a nine is an A which is really the same thing as the second degree of the scale. Um, usually a 9 implies that you're adding the 9 to the top of the chord. Um, so let's add an A to our regular G major chord. We've got a couple different A's to choose from. Um, let's Our first, the one that pops into mind, my mind first is the fifth fret of the E string is an A. So we can add that, to, uh, so move that G up to an A and we get there's a regular G G9 or G add 9 it's got a ninth it's just a regular G major chord with a 9 you can add that 9 in the bass um, it t sort of takes away from the tonality of the G chord because you now have an A in the bass so it sounds a little bit more like an A chord Still a very nice sound. So now we have two on the G string open, two on the A string, and uh, three on the E string. So in scale degrees, that's two or nine, and then five is the D, three is the B on the A string, and the root is G on the E string. Whereas the other way around, rather than having that nine, the bass, or two, um, 2 and 9 being the same thing. We have a G in the bass, which makes it sound more like a G chord. Um, especially if it's just if it's just a mandolin playing chords solo. If there's a, as I said in the other lessons, um, if there's a bass playing with you or a guitar that's really driving home that G, then this can be, having that A in the bass doesn't really matter because the bass of a mandolin is still a lot higher than a, the bass of a bass guitar or uh, acoustic guitar. Um, so your your A is kind of cancelled out by whatever other chords are going on um, in the ensemble. But if it let's just sort of think about mandolins for a second. If it's just you playing some chords and you're playing a G chord, even if it's a G nine, it's helpful to have that G in the bass because it sort of drives the chord home as a G rather than an A chord. Um, so maybe you see a six, maybe you want a, a C6 chord. So let's see, we have, think about our C scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or one. One, two, three, four, five, six, six, five, four, three, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, three, five, six, five, three, one. So the notes in a G in a C major chord with a six are C, E, G, just like a major chord, and then the sixth is uh, the next note of the scale above the five, which is an A. Um, so we have C, E, G, A. 
We can recombine those. Let's maybe have the C in the bass. Put the G on the fifth fret of the D string. G, uh, C, G. And now we need a third. Um, there's an E on the E string. Uh, sorry, on the A string. C, G, E. E is uh, seventh fret on the A string. And now we need that six. Um, there's a six there. We're looking for an A. We have fifth fret on the E string. So C, G, E. And then A is the six. And there you have it. Um, and now maybe somebody wants an 11 chord. And you say, oh boy, 11, that's a, that's a pretty high number. Um, my, my way of thinking about it is you can just uh, subtract, essentially, well, yeah, you can subtract 7 from any number. So like with that 9, the 9 is really a 2 because um, in the key of G, let's just stay in the key of G rather than going to C. So, um, make it easier for you. Um, G. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine is an A, but it's also kind of the same thing as a two. Um, and then, so an eleven is just two scale degrees above a nine. Um, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So an eleven is a C which is sort of the same as a 4 in if you're starting on G. 1, 2, 3, 4 is a C, or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 is a C. So 4, 11, pretty much the same thing. Like with the 9s, if you have an 11, you're kind of going to want it in a place that's um, in the on the higher end of the register, so your chord still sounds like a G chord, even though you've got a C in it. Uh, which isn't a C isn't in your standard major chord. Um, so maybe if we want to add that C, we can make this, this is kind of a stretch, but it's an example. You got a B on the A string, and then a C way up high. It's uh, you kind of get that crunch there, but um, it's not the worst. Or you can flip those around so you have. G in the bass, 5 is a D. Let's put your uh, 3 on the 7th fret as a B in a G chord. Is the 3rd the is a B. There's a B. Let's move that up an octave. And let's put that um, 11 that we're working with, which is a C, on the 3rd fret of the A string. Again, kind of a crunchy chord. But that's what you get when you have the third of a chord, which is a B, and a 11, which is the same as a 4, you kind of have 3 and 4 right next to each other. So you have that B, 1, 2, 3, and that 4, or, uh, or 11, 1, 2, 3, 4, 11, you have that B and C right next to each other. Um, where's a good place to put this? Well, let's see, if I have the B there, and then a C ne right, right next to it. B, C, B, C. I'm just going to split the strings for a second here. You get that really crunchy sound of a half step right next to itself, or right next to each other. A B and a C. Um, so these chords are going to get a little crunchier, but again, you can resolve them in ways like maybe that C and B. So that's going G11 down to a G9, which is that A on the E string, and then down to your right G. Maybe uh, G major 7 to finish it off, leave it a little bit unresolved. Um, so that's an example, and again, like with learning those first three four note chords, the uh, the um, major seven, the dominant seven, and the minor seven, um, knowing your scales and um, getting used to some of the patterns that come up with these chords, um, and just remembering you can, if you see a high number, just subtract seven. 
So if you see a 13, subtract 7 and you get a 6. Um, so a 13 is the same idea as a 6. We hit a 6 chord at one point in this lesson. Um, and just sort of getting comfortable, once you get comfortable with maybe just trying it in the key of G, then working it out for the key of A or the key of C. Um, and just sort of keep in mind as you find patterns that you can probably, any pattern you find on an instrument, on, man, on the mandolin that uses all four chord, all four strings, you can just slide that around. And it, it works out. Um, so thanks for watching. Um, if you have any questions, put them in the comments and I'll try to answer them. Um, and check out mandolessons.com for more chords, uh, sorry, for more lessons. And, um, hope to see you again soon.